Everyone is Rick Silva. I know this is a long, long video. So get your pen, get your paper, get your coffee. And also you'll look down below. There's a link where you can download the full PDF of this presentation. Here's what we're going to cover. I'm going to read it. It's so long. The six laws that must be followed for networking success, the networking pipeline, what a customer avatar is an example of one of my customer avatars, the five most important rules of networking, how to approach people on social media, when to be a sales person and went to be a networker, full elevator pitch training, what the professional networkers do to become successful, what's the difference between a lead and a referral, what's your job as a professional networker, power partnering, also called sphere of influence, purse of influence, circle of influence, center of influence, what they are and how you determine who yours are and much, much more. Let's go. Hey everybody, it's Rick Silva. Hey, get your notepads ready. Get your coffee. I got my coffee. I got my water. I don't have a notepad. I got about 190 slides to go, 197 slides to go over with you. So we'll go about 50 minutes, 55 minutes, and then we're going to take a three minute break. And then we're going to do another 20, 30, 35 minutes, probably going to go 90 minutes today. Again, thanks for being here. My name is Rick Silva. You'll learn about more, more about me in a second here. What I want to go over first is in the, in the, in the registration for this seminar, I put a question, but it wasn't mandatory. So not all of you answered it, but the question was, what are your biggest networking challenges? So I want to go over what you guys sent me and it, it's 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 going to be enlightening to say the least with some of the questions so my specific question is what are your current networking challenges so this is what was sent i'm not putting anybody's name on it but one of the ones i'm in i'm 24 in an industry dominated by those closest to retirement age okay and then uh connecting with people who refer others versus just looking for the next client i like it competition market saturation creating unique messaging i can tell you today's standing out from the competition guaranteed we're going to cover that today getting to the decision maker not as much today but we need three or four uh things in our foundation before we can get to the decision maker that's what we're going to work on today uh time i've heard time i don't have time to network uh so you're making a million dollars a year. You don't need it. And if that's not the case, then you better find time. Time is time is just an excuse for somebody doing something else. You got time to read a book. You got time to watch TV. You got time to network. Networking has never been easier than it is right now. Um, I've had over 6,000 coffee meetings and I haven't had to leave the house in over a year and I've had a gazillion coffee meetings. Uh, brand name recognition. I'm going to help you with that through your elevator pitch. COVID-19 uh, has been not great for some and great for others. It's been pretty good for me because I haven't had to drive to all these coffee shops. Times of COVID have been tough as we can't go directly into hospitals to give information to social worker and case managers. I've dealt with this uh, with a few people who do in-home elder care and you know outside elder care. And it is a challenge and we might have to get created with Zooms. How to find more prospects when I have gone through my list. I'm going to teach you today that you should never use your personal list because you don't want people to hate you. So don't worry about having a list. Going out and creating strategies, increasing referrals from current clients, finding property and casually financial planners to partner with. Oh boy, this the 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 last 30 minutes of this is going to be about that. Seems like everybody I I know already knows a realtor. I've coached thousands and thousands and thousands of realtors. I'm going to show you today how to stand out as a real estate agent. Having the motivation. I thought this one was the most interesting. So here's the thing. Uh, I asked, what's your biggest question or concern about networking? The response was motivation. How about no food in the refrigerator? That might motivate you. How about can't make my car payment? That might motivate you. Or like I have uh, uh, eight feet of dry erase board here. My entire wall or is my vision board and all my notes. How about having a vision board? How about thinking of other people and what you could do? Um, thinking about money for yourself is selfish. Thinking about having lots of money so you can help other people, and that's not selfish. So find something that motivates you, but I can tell you um, no, food in the, no food in the refrigerator is a pretty good motivator. Getting in front of enough people virtually, I'm going to give you some ideas on that today. Having a networking game plan, I'm going to give you one third of a game plan today. Structure and, uh, and contacting and inviting, not as much today. I have a Coffee Meeting Millionaire video that can help you with that. But what we're going to cover today is going to help you 
get to the point where you can do a lot of this. And then all of it, I'm crappy at this. Now, I like that because when you say, I need help with everything, I'm crappy at it, then you're you're asking for help. I had a couple of people hit me up saying, hey, Rick, I already know everything about networking. I just want to check out what you have to say. If you know everything about networking, then you're not placing ads. You're not running Facebook. You're doing zero marketing. You're sitting and business is coming to you every day, every week. You're making a million bucks a year without doing any outreach. If that's true for you, then yes, you know how to network. Uh, having time to follow up is a challenge. I understand getting started. I'm going to teach you how to get started today. And I want to start a new networking group. It's daunting. I have an entire video on that. I've facilitated like 1,500 referral groups. And uh, if you want to know more about that, then hit me directly. Okay. Party time. I'm checking my chat box for you guys. If you guys have any questions during this presentation, just put them in the questions box. Okay. So what we're going to cover today is the agenda. Who's Rick Silva? Who's this crazy guy that networks? The laws you must follow. We're going to talk about the pipeline, the avatar, elevator pitch. We're going deep, 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 deep today on elevator pitch. And then uh, rule number five for networkers. And then we're going to talk, talk about power partnering. Real quick about me. My name is Rick Silva again for the 87th time. I was a recruiter back in the 90s. I was an engineer first, and I was a recruiter. Got laid off from Kodak and laid off from Cisco Systems in 1998 and 2001. 2001, I went into a jewelry store. I was previously married to get my wedding ring cleaned, and I knew more about watches than the store manager. I have about 30 or 40 watches. I like watches. And he offered me a job. I sold jewelry, and then I started selling all kinds of jewelry to a lady and I go, what do you do? And she goes, I sell yellow pages. I went, huh? She goes, I could get you a job there in a second. So I actually interviewed there and I had more sales experience than half the people that worked there and a bunch of kids working there. So I did, I did uh, yellow pages for seven months and I have what's called a one FU limit. And if you guys remember Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, when they were given stacks of crappy leads and people were yelling at them, I was getting these stacks of leads and people were telling me to F off and it's like, I'm just calling to see if you want to ever F you guys. You guys F and call every day. So they were giving me these stacks of leads that the whole office had called. So now when I get a hold of them, I'm getting yelled at. So uh, I, I lasted about seven months. But while I was there, I met a lady named Sharon who was running uh, networking groups. And she was trying to get me to join her groups for Yellow Pages. And I was like, man, what you do sounds kind of cool. So we formed a partnership. And I ran networking groups with her from August 2003 until the last day of March 2004. We had an agreement to break off. She got out of the business, and I carried it on. So I started what's called B2B Gathering. I spent over 17 years of uh, running monthly referral groups. I started that in 04. And then in 2008, those of you that recall the real estate crash, my house went $200,000 under market the same month I got divorced in February of 2008. So I did a, a deed of trust transfer, and I handed my house to my ex-wife. And I moved out. I got an apartment. Excuse me. Got an apartment. And... Uh, Little did I know my my income was going to go from fourteen thousand a month down to six thousand a month, and I was going to have child support and rent. So that didn't last long. I moved in with my friend named Chris, and I lived with him. Put everything I owned in storage, rented a room from him, and then he got hired by Google as a recruiter. Big sign-on bonus. Bought a house and moved away. So now I go from having an apartment to renting a room. Now where am I going to live? Well, this is what happened. When your income goes from fourteen thousand a month to six, but you have to move out, pay two thousand dollars a month child support. I don't know how long your money would last, but when you when you go from income here and bills here to bills here and income here, that gap didn't last long. Lost everything. That was me. No money. That's the actual. That's not a car like the car. That is the actual Cadillac Deville that parked right there. That is the parking lot for those of you that live in the, the San Francisco Bay Area and or the Tri-Valley and or Pleasanton, the Pleasanton Hotel parking lot. That's where they came and got my car and put it on a flatbed. 
I moved into my office, and if you know where the Pleasanton Hotel is, downtown Pleasanton, the top floor up above the restaurants are offices. Well, they're converted bedrooms. So this is a, this is a converted bedroom. And it has closets. As you can see on the right-hand side, there's closets. So I put my clothes in those closets. I slept on that futon for seven months, and I showered at the gym. I was homeless for seven months, showered at the gym. Big, famous Rick Silva signing an autograph, sharing the stage with Les Brown is homeless. Yep, can happen to anybody. Then uh, a few years, a few uh, while I was homeless, but it was a few years after getting divorced, Marcella, my now wife, joined my networking groups, and she she joined it. She was a, a, a nuclear scientist and software engineer at Lawrence Livermore Lab by day and helping people invest in land part-time. Well, she joined one of my groups to help promote that business. I move in with her, and I don't pay attention to it for months. And then the owner of the company did a webinar, and something told me to watch the webinar. So I turn around. As this slide gets on the screen, and he explains, you find an area like this, and these yellow lines, Google put these lines in to show you where the roads ended up, but in this picture, there are no roads. This is a backdated Google image, 2002, Rancho Cucamonga. And if you can find an area like this, imagine Dublin or Milpitas or Livermore 10 or 15 years ago. If you can buy land here, at fifty to one hundred and fifty thousand an acre, and sell it to developers to look like this, you can become quite wealthy. When I saw this, I went, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" So, those of you who knew me ten or twelve years ago, you know I stopped teaching networking. I ran my groups, but I wasn't doing any of these seminars. I wasn't one-on-one -on -one coaching. I spent eight years learning this land investing business, and there's no way to water it down. Those two slides made me a multimillionaire. So now I'm able to work 10 or 15 hours a week and spend my time doing these coaches, doing one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one training. So there's my wife, Marcella. We've won every award for the last nine years. That's our third trip to Mu'urea. That's out, outside of Tahiti. Um, that's, at the, uh, that's at the Hilton. We say that the, the Continental, the, I think it was, that's a Continental, but it's overwater bungalows, all free. Been to Santorini, been all over the world, Russia, Germany. Bavaria, Switzerland, everywhere you could name all through, uh, all for free because we won those awards. And guess what? In those nine years, we've done over 650 real estate transactions. And not one time have I knocked on the door, cold called, bought leads, did Facebook ads, none of it. I never paid for a dime to make 650 real estate sales in nine years. I'm going to show you today how we did that. Again, as we're going forward, if you're watching this live, because this is going to be uh, going on the YouTube channel, one referral away. If you're watching live and you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask. I've had over 6,000 one-on-one coffee meetings, and I can tell you from 6,000 coffee meetings experience that networking has never been easier than it is right now. Uh, I love doing it virtually. It saves on gas, wear and tear on the car, everything. Facilitated well over 1,200 referral groups. Shared the, stage with, shared the stage with Les Brown at the, the Millionaire Marketing Seminar when I was broke, but I knew this stuff worked. What I'm going to show you today, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. And when I started to create hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars per year for myself through my wife, that's when I really, really knew it worked. That's when I really started teaching it. When I, It took me years and years, eight, ten years to really get this down. So... Those of you who think you know a lot about networking, maybe you already make a million dollars a year, maybe make a half a million dollars a year, maybe make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Wherever you are, if you're not a hundred percent referral based, I can help you make more money on one condition. <clears throat> when I sat down with my my one of my two mentors, he goes, Rick, I know you're a big deal in your world. You've signed autographs, blah, blah, blah. He goes, in our world of land investing, if you want to get wealthy, you better take that 10-gallon ego, ego hat off and put it by the door. If you can take the ego hat off, it will allow information to come in. So all I'm asking you to do is whatever you think you know about networking, just 
open your mind because you're going to hear some things today you've never heard. Even if you've heard me do seminars before, you're going to hear something new or hear it differently. But you got to take the ego hat off. And let's assume for the next hour and 10 minutes that maybe Rick knows something about this that he can teach you. Okay? So get ready. <clears throat> this is how the information is going to come. It's coming in your face. Boom! Blast the water. <laughs> And it might overwhelm you a little bit. Take a lot of notes. Ask questions. Slow me down if you need to. So here we go. Rule number one for success in networking, and I'm going to grab something real quick. You don't have to read this very large 330-page book because I did it for you. It's called The 100 Unbreak Unbreakable uh, Laws of Business Success. For networking, you need six. For networking, you need six. And here they are, the law of reciprocity, the law of attraction, the law of mutual exchange, the law of increasing returns, the law of abundance, Parkinson's law. I'm not going into five of those laws today. I'm going to go into, actually, I'm going to go into four and a half of them. We're going to go law of attraction, a little bit on the law of abundance. So there's one law in the world, one law you have to break. And I'm not uh, telling you to break laws, but this one law you have to break. When you're in an airplane, you have to break the law of gravity. Okay, That's the only law you can break for a limited amount of time. These laws on the screen you cannot break. And I'll go into a little bit more here shortly. So with the proper elevator pitch and following the laws if you're not following the laws and you don't have a properly crafted elevator pitch you will not become as successful as you could you might think you're successful with networking now but what if it was five times more okay so without the proper mentality the proper mindset we can't uh possibly hope to build a, a networking practice so I, I like to show pictures of homes and then say the foundation of the home is much more important than the home because without a good foundation, we can't have this beautiful home. This is what happens without a good foundation. It breaks and it cracks. And the breaking of the cra the breaking and the cracking, if you're sitting on this webinar right now and you're making more than you you ever thought you could earn, you're doing fantastic. Most people aren't that way. Uh, last year, I made four hundred and fourteen thousand. Something we're right in there, four hundred and fourteen thousand more than I did the year before. So this is twenty twenty one. I'm talking about COVID year twenty twenty. I made four hundred and fifteen ish thousand more than I did two thousand nineteen because I have a network built. If you made less, then let's work on your network. But the only way I can help you is if you build the foundation properly and you have a good elevator pitch. That's why whenever I teach networking, the first thing is elevator pitch because we can't put a roof on this house. The elevator pitch is this, the foundation. Before we can put the walls and the roof, we have to have elevator pitch and laws. Without that, we cannot have more. All right. So when I first met my wife and she was a software engineer, I said, just have coffee meeting, coffee meeting, coffee meeting, coffee meeting, coffee meetings, have them, have them, have them. And don't ever think about making a sale. So I'm going to say this over and over again today. If you're going to a chamber of commerce event, you're speed networking, I don't care what it is. If the goal of being there is to make a sale, you're breaking the law of reciprocity. You're never going to build a referral-based practice if your thought is, I'm going to make a sale. you got to get that out of your mind or you cannot build a referral-based practice. So we need to plant seeds just like a farmer. We're going to have coffee meeting after coffee meeting after coffee meeting. Every coffee meeting is a seed, is a seed, is a seed. Now, we're going to have that coffee meeting with power partners, and I'll get into that later, what a power partner is if you don't know. But we're going to have power partners with people. We're going to teach them. Listen closely. We're going to teach them what we do. We're going to teach them how to send us referrals, not sell to them. We want to build this. We want to have coffee meetings. We want to teach people what we do. We don't know when. They, they may say, you know what? What you do sounds awesome. 
forget my clients. I want what you have. But you'll do that through a pr properly crafted elevator pitch. So I don't know how long these sprouts are going to take, but I guarantee you, you have enough coffee beatings, they're going to start popping. So I've had maybe 62 or 6,300 coffee meetings. My wife has had close to 4,000, if not more. That's 10,000 coffee meetings between the two of us. Do you wonder why our income didn't go down? Because we have a network built, not a network of people we've tried to sell to, a network of people we've educated on what we do. So the sprouts, so I want you to imagine, if you're in real estate, imagine meeting with a financial planner. Uh, whatever industry you're in, uh, Mel Melanie's on today. Melanie is driver cognitive assistance. So if you have an older relative who you're not sure they should be driving, you would go to her. Or she'd run them through some tests, and if they pass, they can drive. If not, they get the license taken away. For Melanie, uh, in-home elder care senior consultants would be a good power partner for her. If all Melanie did was have coffee with senior consultants, then someday, sometime, one of them is going to become this on the screen, a corn stalk. And it's going to start to grow through nurturing. And then that one elder care consultant, maybe that one person sell, sends Melanie a client a month. And all of a sudden, that one coffee meeting, a client a month is 12. Now, in our land banking business, we have one mortgage lender that we've done 65 deals with, 65 deals in four years. We're in real estate, 65 deals with one mortgage lender because when I went back here and had the coffee meetings, I didn't go, do you want to buy land? Do you want to buy land? Do you want No, I taught them what we do. And you're going to hear the land banking and my other elevator speech coming up so you can get an idea of how we do it. Now, I don't care what you do. I had somebody email me directly uh, talking to me about my website who registered here. Um, I've got people who do marketing websites awesome whatever you do there's only four ways you're going to build your business so you think about what you do don't worry about that i teach networking and i do land land investing whatever you do you think about you there's only four ways you're going to build that business there are no other ways one of them is you're going to cold call you're going to door knock you're going to circle prospect you're going to you're going to premise whatever you call it the bottom left hand side you're going to do some form of advertising whether that's business cards websites, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, geez, there's so many platforms out there, I don't even follow them. I use Facebook and YouTube. I do not like LinkedIn, and I'm not using all parlor and all this other stuff. That's me. So on the left-hand side, you'll see the word, the, the word cold calling is red. Red means red alert. Now, if you door knock or you premise or you circle prospect, I don't mean to offend you. I'm just going to give you a different way to look at it. If you cold call, cold bang, bang the phones, bang, hey, make sure you smile and dial, which I've made thousands and thousands of cold calls, and I don't do that stuff anymore. But if you're cold calling, okay, number one, if you do make a sale, when that sale's over, you got to go back to cold calling. I met one mortgage lender did 65 deals. I met one mortgage lender did 65 deals. How many cold calls are you going to have to make? Thousands and thousands and thousands to do 65 sales. And I'm still continually being fed by that mortgage lender, and you're, you're not being fed when you knock on someone's door and ask them, hey, you're looking to buy or sell your home in the next six to nine months? If you're door knocking, it's only because you don't know how to network. Um, if you're door knocking, it's because Buffini or Stump or the Fairy Boys uh, told you it's a great way to build your business, and it's not. Uh, cold calling is has the appearance of being desperate, weak, not successful. And how do you feel when you run, walk it up and down the street knocking on doors or cold calling? Ask yourself how you feel then. And then ask yourself how you feel if you're sitting in a coffee shop or you're driving around or you're at home. I like to smoke cigars. I'm sitting in my backyard smoking a cigar and the phone rings. Hey, Rick, I just got off the phone with Estella and she told me to call you about investing in land. And that happens. We did 64 deals last year, and 50 of them happened that way. So how do you feel when you're, you're smiling and dialing, you're knocking on the door, or how do you feel when you're sitting there and someone goes, hey, you sold a home to my uncle, and he said you are awesome. I'd like you to help me find a home. That's a networker. 
that's a networker. You should cold call, however, so you can learn how much it sucks. There's no leverage in cold calling. That's why it's red. You should get out of it as soon as possible. Advertising costs money. If you want to work with leads, that's awesome for you. I do not, under any circumstance, work with a lead ever. And I'll, I, I won't be able to get much into it today about the difference between a lead and a referral. <clears throat> but I will tell you that a lead is going to ask you for discounts, is going to leave at the last minute and go work with their brother-in-law, um, is going to ask for shame of your commission, is going to ask you 10 million questions where a referral says, where do I sign? So remember, when you advertise, you are commoditized. You are nothing but a number. When you cold call, you're nothing but a number. When you're advertised, you're nothing but a number. They care about price and how much you're making and all that stuff. Now, cold calling and advertising is over there. If you, if you want to learn how to cold call, I can make you the best cold caller in your office. But I would pray that soon you would get out of it. Now, on the right-hand side, word of mouth and networking is blue because blue is nice and soothing. And it shows up good on my slide. So, word of mouth. Now, I'm looking at the list, and I know at least half of you personally, and some of you I don't, but now I do. Hey, I'm going to guess that every single one of you has had a previous career. Unless you started out of high school and what you're doing now, you've had a previous career. Now, when you switched careers and you told everyone you knew, that's called word of mouth. So to be very clear, word of mouth is talking to people you know. Let that sink in. You switched careers and you told everyone you knew. Now, just like in the beginning when I read those uh, the list, yes, the list of potential people for you to talk to is going to run out until I teach you how to network. And then it will never run out. It can't run out. It's impossible to run out. But what we're going to incorporate into word of mouth is what we call networking. And networking is talking to complete strangers, creating win-win scenarios. It's not walking up to people and selling to them. So what we need to do as a professional networker is, number one, we need to have a good pre-screen. When I told you I don't work with leads, now, let me, let me explain what I'm, what I'm talking about here. When I talk about leads and referrals, okay? So if you, I'm looking at you, if you are doing any form of business where the meeting takes longer than a half an hour, the pre-screen, Real estate could take hours and hours, and mortgage could take a long time. I don't know what you all do. If you guys want to type in the chat box, in the questions box, and tell me what you do, type it in there right now. And I'll use some of you as examples. But if you, what you do takes longer than 20 or 30 minutes in an initial consultation, and you're working with leads, you're going to spend a lot of time, a lot of time, talking to people and not making sales. So if you're going to do lead generating and, the, and it takes a long time, then I would highly recommend that you run them through a very good website or a very good funnel with long sales letters and videos to try to weed them out. Okay, to try to weed them out. If you're in real estate or mortgage, financial planning, insurance, meetings that take a long time. We had one person type in what they do. There's a lot of you here. You guys should be typing in what you do. There you go. Now we're doing it. If your meeting takes a long time, if you're a real estate agent, the meeting takes an hour and a half to find out if you're going to get them as a client. This is me. Call me crazy. I would never, ever work with a lead, ever, under any circumstance, only referrals. So let's get into it a little bit more and see if it's crazy. And I'm reading, I'm reading what you guys, what you guys do. And everybody's flying and now look at that. I like it. You guys are listening. I woke you up. I like it. Those of you that are watching on record, type, type, type down in the, type down in the chat box and in the YouTube channel, what you do. And I'll, I'll reach out to you if you have any questions about networking. Here's your job as a networker. Here we go. Your job is to do these four things. Hopefully the two on the right. You're going to bring in leads and referrals. You're going to pre-screen them. If they're a lead, I'm not working with them. 
unless they've gone through a full pre-screening process, which is a website, videos, all kinds of stuff. If they're a referral, I have a complete document that is filled out. So in land banking, my, my new friend Cheryl is on here with her real estate team. And if Cheryl ever sends me, hey, I got a client who wants to buy land, and she gives me a name and a number, I'm not going to call them. I'm going to send Cheryl about 10 or 12 questions. Who are they? How old are they? Where do they live? How much money do you think they have? Why do you think they're interested in 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 in, uh, in land? All these different things, okay? And then I'm going to make contact in a very particular way with a very particular script. But what we need to do is we need to make sales. And by the way, I use the word close, but I 1,000% disagree with the word close. When you make a sale, you actually opened the sale. You didn't close the sale. You opened the sale because your job is to turn some, if not all, of these people into your non-commissioned, non-salaried sales force. So as you start to make sales, you teach them how to send you their friends and family members. Let me assure you of this. For those of you who follow Joe Stump for the Buffinis, the script that you use to have at best a mediocre referral practice is what they teach. Hey, the best compliment you could give me is a referral to a friend or family member. Ah. Hey, would you happen to know anyone else like you who might be interested in buying or selling a home in the next 30 to 60 to 90 days? It's so bad. And I don't know how those guys got famous teaching that, but I'm going to teach you something today that's a 10,000 times better because what they teach is third grade. Okay? Going on record, on record, Brian Buffini, Fairy Boys, Joe Stump, your networking education is I'm being very kind in saying it's third grade. All right. Rule number two, have a good avatar. Have a good avatar. Rick, what's an avatar? I'm going to read you mine right now, and then step one for you in your networking journey that I can help you with if you're interested, step one is you got to create a very detailed avatar. Step two, elevator pitch, which is what we're doing now. All right. Do you have one? Because I do. Do you? I do. Here we go. My avatar's name is Kelly. Kelly, now, by the way, just so you guys know, let me back up. This is for my land investing business. Kelly is a concerned investor who dreams of becoming a millionaire. Currently, Kelly's focus is on finding a winning investment and finding better and safer investments. Ultimately, Kelly really wants to retire with more and leave a financial legacy. Right now, this minute, Kelly would be ecstatic if she could stop losing money, prevent further money loss, find an invest investment that is easy, understandable, and makes money. Unfortunately, Kelly still needs to figure out how to find a great investment, invest in real estate to create wealth, figure out how to purchase real estate with her old 401k or IRA. And just as a side note of those 650 deals we've done, about over 500 have been with people who have old 401ks. Yes, you can roll that into a self-directed IRA and buy land. Kelly is also really frustrated by the fact that her 401k only goes up when she puts money into it. Her 401k is a 201k. And she's tired of the five T's, tenants, toilets, termites, trouble, and taxes. Plus, she feels the need to get these answers, these questions answered before she can move forward. How do I find a great investment that doesn't go down when the wind blows? Where should I put my money when I sell my investment property? Where can I find an investment that doesn't stress me out? Kelly's also still hung up on the idea that the investment doesn't create cash flow. Creating wealth takes time and you aren't gonna get rich overnight. They think they need a lot of money to invest in real estate. In fact, she feels like volatile markets actually don't want her to succeed with finding a winning investment or finding better and safer investments. When all is said and done, Kelly just wants to reach financial freedom, have a worry-free investment, have financial peace of mind. To help Kelly, I would invite her to check out one of my webinars so she can learn about uh, land banking, how land, ba land banking can secure her future. I promise to show her the opportunity to learn how to invest like the wealthy. Now, that's my avatar. Most real estate agents, you walk up to, hey, what's a good client for you? Uh, anybody who needs a home? Uh, anybody who's renting? 
you can't build a referral-based practice like that. You're going to be a good salesperson. I'm not taking anything away from your sales skills, but you're not going to get a lot of referrals. So, guys, just so we're clear, ladies, because there's way more ladies. It's a, one, two. Wow, there's way more women on this. That's great. Women are better networkers than men. There should be more men. But this was not my elevator pitch. This was just my avatar. I create my elevator pitch off the avatar. So step one, you got to have a good avatar. I have unbelievably advanced software that I would walk you through where you could create your avatar using the software. That's in my one referral away course, which I'll tell you about in a little while. We got a special discount for you. If you're watching it today or watching it on the YouTube channel or if you came from the Pleasanton Chamber, if you're watching this, if it's 2025 and you're watching this, you'll get the same deal. I'll show it to you later. Rule number three in networking. This is going to, this is, I don't know if this is going to register for all of you right away. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot in a networking environment use the words you and your. You can't use the words you and your. When you use the words you and your, you're a salesperson. And Sharif, yes, you are uh, representing the male gender. And I like it. By the way, so far what people have typed, we, we have people looking for and are private money lenders. Youth sports programs, <clears throat> um, Daryl, you said you can't say you do con consultation, but I'd love to know what you do for work. We have um, director of hotel sales. We have health insurance for small businesses. We have investors looking for private money. We have someone who's currently unemployed. Uh, hopefully you find gainful employment, and I hope, I hope this is an opportunity for you to find something that was better than before. Having been a recruiter for years, it sounds weird, but you're unemployed. I'm going to say congratulations because hopefully you find something better than you had. I just hope you find it soon. Um, and then Sharif is representing the male gender. Using the words you and your on speed networking at a chamber of commerce event with a power partner is offensive and people want to puke. So when you're in a sales, a sales mode, use you and your all you want. So if somebody asks you, hey, Chris, tell me more about your health insurance for businesses. I might be interested that you can do this. You can do Then you use you and your. When you are networking, you do not use the words you and your. So understand people want to help you, but those same people don't want to be sold to. So I'm going to get a little sip here, and we're going to go over some things that are embarrassing for people. I'm going to show you some Facebook screenshots that have been sent to me. These people really don't know me. COVID just hit in March. A couple, uh, I think one or two of these are in March, and the other one's in May. <clears throat> and I want to give you an example of it. Here's the biggest problem with real estate, and then also. Um, with network marketing. Network marketers are taught just pitch everyone you meet, pitch everyone you meet, pitch everybody, pitch everybody. And, and I just, I cannot tell you how much I disagree with that because it's offensive. So let's look at something and you tell me if this is offensive or not. This is out of the blue. Don't know who this person is. Put it in my inbox. Hi, Rick. I came across your profile and see you're, you're in real estate and a business coach. Yay. With all this going on, we have had a lot of great success helping people pivot financially. Are you keeping your options open to make money in other industries? Now, if you've received emails like this, you're already ducking and covering like this. They're going to sell me life insurance. They're going to sell me health stuff. They're going to sell me um, direct sales or network marketing. Now, let me tell you, I've coached thousands and thousands of network marketers. There is nothing wrong with those industries. I'm involved in a CBD company. I take the CBD, so why didn't I just offer to join it? And it pays my car payment every month. Having said that, if you cold contact people, they see you coming a mile away. Also, let me just tell you this. If he sees I'm in real estate and sees, which I am not a business coach, I'm a networking consultant or networking coach. Am I going to have somebody mentor me and help me make money? Number one, that spells Y-O-U with the letter U. That's an absolute you're dreaming. 
And then when you hit me up with, are you keeping your options? That's offensive. I'm already checking out. I'm already trying to figure out how to get away. So that's one offensive message. Now, another person did a nice what I call hook. It's a lead generating hook into a sale. It could have been done much better. I could have improved this, but this is what happened. Somebody put, how many cups of coffee do you drink a day? That's it. Well, I answered it. And I wrote four cups. This is what showed up in my instant messenger box. Four cups a day, right? <laughs> You need you need this in your life. So there's you. There's your. Now I already missed one. I missed this you. I didn't circle it. So there's three right here. You need this in your life. Hi, thanks for your vote on my poll. The skinny brew black coffee blah 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 burns fat, supports weight loss, boosts brain function, energy uh, caffeine for more energy. I'm gonna stop there, and I'm gonna stand up just for a minute. I'm not bragging everybody. But I'm gonna stand up for a minute. I weighed 201 pounds six years ago. I got diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, and I cured it without medication. I lost 40 pounds. I'm fit. If I lost any more weight, I'd blow down the street. It's offensive. If, if you're overweight and somebody says this supports weight loss, that's offensive. Um, boost brain malfunction. So I have a I – ha, I use um, – I can't believe I can't remember the name of it, and I take it all the time. That improves the brain function, the, the oil. Bulletproof coffee, that helps. And then caffeine, guys. Those of you who know me personally, I'm out of my mind. I'm so I'm so in. I have so much passion for doing. Yeah, the MCT, you got it. I'm so I have so much passion for what I'm doing here. If I had any more energy, my head would fall off my shoulders. So this doesn't resonate with me. I don't need to lose weight. Blah blah blah. If you're intermittent fasting or living keto lifestyle, blah blah blah. Now, I do like they won't cause a blood sugar surge because I cured type 2 diabetes, but they don't know that. And then we read all this. It has two carbs, blah, blah, blah. All this showed up because I told somebody to drink four cups of coffee a day. For $20, you get a three-day sample pack just like in the picture above. Would you like to go ahead and snag the sample pack? No, because I, I just I don't like the, the hard pitch. I don't like all the you, you, you. Somebody, do you? No, no. Rick, I was looking at your profile and see you're in real estate. Anybody checking grammar? You and you are, baby. Carol Marshall, my grammar lady, is going to, she's, Carol's watching this tearing up my slides, let alone some of the stuff that's going on in these. I see, I see you're interested in real estate. I'm an entrepreneur and my company, we love working with smart professional people. Blah. Now, the smartest thing out of all of these, let me just tell you, I like the doesn't spike the sugar in the previous one. This is something I've used for years. We love working with smart, professional people. Hey, they're calling me smart and professional. That's the best thing. Made me feel good. That's the only thing in this paragraph that makes me feel good. I love working with smart, professional people. Quick question. Uh-oh. Here it comes. Oh, no. Ah, do you keep your options open in terms of making money outside of what you're currently doing as a real estate professional? Okay, so just to digress for a second, attorneys cannot cold call. They could be disbarred. Doctors don't cold call. Um, there's some other industries, but doctors, attorneys, CPAs, I don't think they're allowed to even pick up the phone and look for business either. I think they all could lose their licenses, and they're all really highly paid. Guess what? Real estate is probably singularly the most highly paid industry on the planet. So you're hitting me up with a side deal that you're not even telling me about. You're hiding it, and you're asking me in the most highly paid industry on planet Earth if I'm looking for something outside. Look at the last sentence, outside of the most highly paid industry in the world. Now, I want to show you this because I want to show you how this could be offensive. Okay, I'm not bragging. I'm stating a fact. 64 sales last year. And I got this at the same time I deposited that check in the mail. That's one of my 64 commission checks last year. And you see the date and time. This is not made up. On my life and every human being I've ever met's life, this is not fake. I just cut out everything. 
because you don't need to see my account numbers or their account numbers and all that. So uh, can I go back one? Uh, no, I'm actually really not looking for something else on the side. And had they, this same message had it said, hey, Rick, I notice you're in real estate and I'm wondering, do you have some friends or family members who might be currently struggling that might need to like make a little extra money? I would love to get a chance to talk to them. If they sent me that, I guarantee you I would have sent them some names. But what they did is they offended me. They tried to hard sell me. They hid behind quick question, which makes me want to throw up. And then they asked me if I want to look for something on the side. And the answer is uh, no, I don't want to look for anything on the side. Now, when to use you and your in a sales presentation. So <clears throat> we have uh, Silvio. Silvio is an investor of mine from Silvio invested a while back. Silvio is, um, is doing private money lending. Silvio, if somebody comes to you and says, Silvio, I need a loan. I can't get a loan from the bank. I need money. Then Silvio, every word of them is, here's what we can do for you. Here's what this will do for you. Here's what I can do for you. You, 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 you. Now, <clears throat> Silvio, if you're sitting down with a banker and you're teaching them how to send you people that they can't qualify for a loan, you are not going to sit down with the banker and say, hey, banker, do you personally need a loan? Do you need a The banker's going to go, what are you, a moron? Why would you be selling to me? I'm your power partner. So. When you're, Silvio, when you're meeting with a banker, Cheryl and your whole crew and a lot of people on here do real estate, if you're sitting with a mortgage lender, don't try to sell them a home. I know it sounds silly, but using the words you and your, you're trying to sell your mortgage lender, power partner, a home, biggest mistake you can make. So see my hand? Turn that salesperson faucet off. Hey, baby. Turn that networking faucet on and do not use the words you and your. Now, a lot of times when I do these presentations, I tell people, steal the model. So I started off with a little bit about me. I gave you an agenda. I gave you a little bit of a call to action with take your ego hat off. I, again, I gave you the agenda and then I went into content. Now. I'm going to read a testimonial to you if you're not feeling good about yourself, maybe you're a little bit down, go to your LinkedIn profile and hopefully there's some nice things people said about you or collect testimonials. If you're in real estate, finance, insurance, mortgage, uh, chiropractic, network marketing, if you're in network marketing, you help people lose weight, get pictures of this. This is what you want, a picture of this and a picture of this. That's what you want. So. Whatever industry you're in, you got to have testimonials, okay? All right. So if you're not feeling good, you're feeling down, you want to you wanna read something that makes you feel good, this is about me. <clears throat> to say Rick is the preeminent guru of networking is an understatement. I've been working with Rick for about a year and he and was feeling anxious to better my networking skills. I did one-on-one -on -one training with Rick and he completely changed the way I think about networking. His advice has enabled me to refocus and revamp how I network. That's Fred Steingraf, financial planner. All right. Go back to that hose with that water blowing your face. We are going to go gangbusters on elevator pitch. Now, somebody wrote me a long paragraph. I'm reading as fast as I can. Hold on. Uh, Daryl, I'm going to ask you a quick question on your on your automotive side of your business. Do you have a shop where cars come in so you can work on them? Give me a yes or no on that. Okay. This is where you're going to want to have this. You're going to want to have a piece of paper. So, Daryl, give me a little more explanation while I'm doing this. You're going to want to have paper and pen. And right now I'm going to teach you line by line how to craft your elevator pitch which is actually coming after I teach you the reticular activating system. If you don't understand the reticular activating system, I cannot. And you don't have a good avatar, I can't help you with your elevator pitch. But having seen an avatar, you'll have a general idea. But first thing we're going to cover right now is the reticular activating system. And those of you who do chiropractic, you know what that is. 
but I want to explain to you what your reticular activating system is. And when you learn, take a deep breath. When you learn how to fire the reticular activating system in your clients, referrals are going to come at a rate you can't even keep up with. So let me teach you. The referral activating systems in the brainstem and in your body, this pen is not a pen. This is an antenna to a radio. Okay? Now, the antenna is at a frequency that brings referrals into your life. But I'm going to show you how it works other ways. But it, it, this antenna, which is a reticular activating system, brings the information to the brain. Okay, let's explain. So if this is an antenna to a radio, and whether I'm tuning the dial to AM, FM, or <clears throat> satellite radio. So if I tune it to country music, I hate country music, but if you like it, when you tune the radio to country music, yes, it's recorded, and you're going to get a copy. The, the country music is going to go into the antenna and the music is going to come out the speakers. If you tune the frequency to the frequency of rock and roll, then rock and roll is going to come out. So all the antenna does is pick up a frequency. So why in the hell is Rick talking about all this stuff? Because this is in your brainstem. And you need to learn how to get on the radio station of your clients. If I said this 10,000 times, people still may not get it. Your clients and your power partners have the reticular activating system in their brainstem. It's an antenna to the radio station of referrals. You have to learn how to tune what you're saying into the radio station so it goes in the brain. Okay. So we're going to, if, if you took two tuning forks and you bang them together and they're the same key, They'll resonate. If one's a different key and you bang them together, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna knock each other out. If you're on a radio station and you take the knob and you constantly turn it, you'll never get any music out of it. But blah, 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 blah. so those of you in real estate or mortgage or whatever industry you're in who have been taught this, <clears throat> good client for you is anybody. What came to your mind? Because when you say anybody's a good client because everybody needs a home, you're casting this wide net because you think that's going to get you more business. And, oh, is it going to get you so much less business when Joe Stump says go up to somebody and say, hey, would you happen to know anybody else who's looking for uh, uh, to, uh, a loan or looking to buy or sell a home? The, word, the use of the word anyone or anybody completely destroys the ability to build a referral-based practice. So we're going to fire this antenna. I'm going to teach you how. I want to show you in practice how it works. Okay? So, you've thought of a car. Yeah, I'm thinking about getting a new BMW. You walk outside, you see that car everywhere you go. You open up a magazine, that car's there. You go on the internet, that car's there. You walk down the street, you see 10 of them. Maybe it was a Tesla. I'm thinking about getting a black Tesla. You see 30 black Teslas the next day. You're thinking about a, a, a diet, and everywhere you go, keto, 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 everywhere you look. That's because you fired your own reticular activating system. You fired your own reticular activating system. I need you to fire it in other people. So like when you think of the BMW and you see them everywhere you go, you're going to teach other people how to fire on your referral channel so everywhere they go they find referrals for you if you're really good at teaching it you got to teach them how to do it i'm teaching you how to do it and this is by the way just so you know this this 90 minutes this doesn't even scratch the surface of networking <laughs> all we've done is talk about avatar proper mentality and the reticular activating system people go i network all the time i'm constantly handing out my business cards that's not networking you're handing out your business cards you're doing speed networking and doing it the way most people do it, excuse me, you're not networking, you're marketing. You're marketing. Most people I know don't network ever. They're marketing. It's completely different. So that's the reticular activating system. You think of stuff and then you see it everywhere. That is the reticular activating system. Now, 
I'm going to give you the reticular activating system in the uh, out in the um, nature. So this is everybody say it with me uh, an acorn, and you're all wrong. It's a wood carving of an acorn. But let's go with acorn. And when we plant that in the ground, what grows the answer? Oak tree. And then I want to ask you this. Why not a lemon tree? Why not a rose bush? Why not a Christmas tree? Why not a tomato plant? Because this seed is genetically programmed to do one thing, and it does it really well. That little tiny seed turns into a giant tree. Now, when you cut the seed open, is there a tree in there? Uh, no. There's the genetic potential to become a tree. The genetic potential to become a tree. There's not a tree in there. Genetic potential. If what's in the water, the soil, and what comes from the sun creates a rose bush, then it is repelled from the seed. If the vitamins and the nutrients in the water, the soil, and the sun can create only an oak tree, then it flies into the seed, and it flies into the seed, and it attracts it. It's called the law of attraction, and it attracts it because it's resonating on the same frequency. Just like you need to fire the reticular activating system in the brainstem, which you could call it an antenna or you could call it an acorn, it has to fire singularly on one topic. So if you say, hey, are you, do you know anyone who's looking to buy or sell a home in the next 60, 90 days? You're, you're, you're taking this seed and you're picking it up and you're replanting it. And a week later, you're replanting it. A week later, you're replanting it. It's vague and it doesn't know what it's going to become. You have to have singular focus for it to become uh, the giant tree. <clears throat> Anybody's a good client. I can work with anybody. Uh, a good lead trip? No. No. Taka. Then the tree won't grow. This picture is your referral-based practice. If you don't have other professionals sending you referrals at least monthly, if not daily or weekly, you just don't have a referral-based practice built, and it might be because you're listening to the wrong people. 17 years of doing nothing but teaching, networking, and running referral groups. I don't do anything else. I bring in business for my wife's business, so I'm a professional networker, and I teach it. That's it for 17 years. A lot of people who think they teach networking, it's like, a, it's like an afterthought. This should be the only thought. So any classes you have ever taken on sales, closing, negotiating, all of that, throw it all out the window. I will make five times more than you, and I'll know nothing about sales if I bring in referrals because referrals are 90% closed when I get them. 90% closed when I get them because they are highly qualified, ready to go. Rick, what's the point of all this stuff? You have to have singular focus. That's it. Now, here we go. This is where you need a pen and a paper. Without further ado, referral pitch training. We needed all that just to know how to even write your name and number down, write your name and company name down. If you are taking notes, this is on record. I have videos on the internet. This is part of the One Referral Away course. But if you want to do this now, I want you to write on the top of your piece of paper 160 to 180. If you're typing it, type 160 to 180 on the top. The average person speaks 160 to 180 words a minute. So if you're doing speed networking and you got 15 seconds, you divide this by four. If you have 30 seconds, cut it in half. If you get 60 seconds, that's how many words you have. I speak of 180 to 190, but most people speak 160 to 180. Unless you're from Texas, like my uncle, and he speaks about 60 words a minute. But people who are raised by people who are from back east talk fast like me, which is about 190. All right, step one. Here you go. Step one of your elevator pitch. Write down your name and company name. Wow. I'm really making you guys work. I hope this didn't stress you out too much. Write down your name and company name. Boom, done. That's it. Rick Silva, B2B Gathering, Inc. Or Rick Silva, creator of the One Referral Away course. Boom, done. Part two. What do you do, sell, offer, specialize in? Just simply write down what you do, sell, offer, or specialize in.
Daryl, what you do, I, I've never met anybody that does that's, that's that's over my head a little bit. But if you're working with clients, hopefully these strategies will help. So write down what you do offer what you do sell offer specialize in. I sell real estate, awesome. I help people buy investment property, awesome. I help people get loans when the banks say no, awesome. And I want you to understand now, look at how beautiful that is, your name and company name and what you do. And I want you to understand their features, and I hope this doesn't hurt your feelings too much. Nobody cares. Hey, everybody, my name is Rick Silva with XYZ Real Estate Company. I've been selling real estate for 30 years, sold 350,000 homes, and made 25 people trillionaires. And who cares? Um, so no one cares about part one and part two. Let's get to what they do care about, and they do care about part three. And part three is this. So what I want you to do, don't write down all three of these. I want you to write down the one that resonates with you. The top three, don't look at the bottom bullet point. The three, when doing business with me, when doing business with my company, when hiring me. Write down the one you like the best. Write down the one you like the best. And then I want you to finish it with the bottom bullet point, my, client, my clients benefit in some of the following ways. So you're going to have one of these three sentences. When doing business with me, my clients benefit in some of the following ways. When, do, uh, when doing business with my company, my clients benefit in some of the following ways. When hiring me, my clients benefit in some of the following ways. Into this, the seven benefit statements. Now, you're going to have some homework. We can't finish this part right now because it will take too long. But write down three of the of the one through seven. Write down the three things that you really, really, really do for your clients. And if you're in the money world, you're probably not in the bottom three. If you're in the chiropractic world, you're you're down four, five, six, seven. Um, Insurance is definitely going to be two and three for sure. Um, real estate, one, two, three, maybe four, but one, two, and three for sure. Um, if I go back and I look real quick, not a lot of you told me what you do. Director of a hotel sales, if you, you're going to be definitely make money if you're trying to get people in there to um, have conferences. Oh, Four Point Pleasant. I've done so many seminars there, Leanne. Holy smokes. I've used those rooms upstairs. I've done, I've done a lot of seminars at your hotel. So, so one of the big selling points for that is um, they're making money if they're, if they're, if they're doing – um, seminars and classes and that's a challenging industry you're in I understand but you're definitely reducing their stress and if your beds are really good you're making them feel good now if you're on the if you're on the, the side that's doing the the seminars and the classes then you got to work in the social distance and all that it's just how you do the messaging so whatever you do pick three no more than three some people only pick two I want you to pick three and here's your homework Here's your homework. There on the bottom. I want you to I want you to write down. I want you to write down how you do that. So let let's go back. Carol just said one three four seven. And I know Carol very well. One three four. Carol, the only I know you make them look good, but in an elevator speech, let, let, let me throw you a curveball, Carol. I've known Carol for 15, 16, 17, 18,000 years. I don't has Carol, has anyone ever called you on the phone and say, Carol, I need you to write me a newsletter and make me look good? I know they need to make money and they need to have good content on their website. And you're reducing the stress of them having to write it. Carol, I don't want to write it. Carol, I need to make more money on my website. Carol, I need Facebook ads which is going to save me time. I don't know if anybody's ever called you on the phone and go, Carol, I need you to make me look good. So I'm going to, I'm going to hold you on one, three, and four. I'm not sure about seven. 
Not sure about seven. Yep. Awesome. So Daryl has a great facility for seminars, three, four, five, and two. Cool. Awesome. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. You're going to pick two or three of these, and then you're going to write down how. Okay. And I'm going to show you an elevator pitch here very, very soon. That's going to show you how to put all this together. <clears throat> you guys thought networking was handing out business cards. <laughs> all right. So here's what we have so far. We have, we have, hey, everyone, my name is Rick Silva, and I'm a professional land banker. I help people invest in land. Wow. And then I'm going to pick, and then I'm going to say, uh, when doing business with me, my clients benefit in some of the following ways. And then I'm going to, if I pick, let's say I picked one, two, and four. I'm going to read the answer by doing this. I also help them with this. I do that. And, and I'm going to show you how this sounds. Okay. Yes, yeah, Carol, you absolutely do number seven. I just don't know if anybody's ever called you on the phone for it is what I'm getting to. I don't know that that's going to be a motivator to help you build your referral-based practice. Now. I'm a, very soon I'm going to read you two unbelievable elevator pitches because one's mine and one's my wife's and we do our whole life around it. I need you, this will be built into your avatar training, but I need you to, the, the best way to explain it is I need you to, to try to figure out who your client is. So look at this screen. Now, if it's not here, just write down what is yours. I try to give you some example, examples. If you're in real estate, a good, a good, a good client is a homeowner or first-time home buyer, a business owner, new business owner. Those of you that do doing money lending, there's a couple of you on here that do that. A good client, a good could be someone's friend or family member, could be an executive, could be an investor. Let's just pick one right now for fun. If you, if hey, some of you might be saying all of them, good. Then you're going to have a whole bunch of different elevator pitches, but you only have to change one sentence in it. Okay. All right. So pick one. And then if it's a business owner, it's not any business that like if you put CEO, I want you to go of a company with 30 employees that does 10 million in gross annual revenue. You have got to be specific. So if you picked one of the ones that's a business owner, what size is the business? How much revenue? That kind of stuff. If it's just homeowner, family member, uh, investor, you don't even need B. Unless you want to put a uh, home, homeowner whose home is worth at least a million dollars, then you can use B as the dollar amount of the home or the size of the loan. <clears throat> so here we go. A perfect client for me is if you hear A, so you want to write that down real quick. A perfect client for me is if you hear A, we're going to go back. I'll make this one easy so it relates to all of you. Friend or family member say any of the following. So basically where we are now is, hey, everyone, my name is Rick Silva, president and founder of B2B Gathering. For 17 years, I facilitated networking groups. The benefits to my groups, one-third of the cost of other networking groups. They only meet once a month, and there never has been food, and there never will be food. A perfect client for me is if you hear a small business owner say any of the following. And before I finish that off, I want you to come up with yours. I need word-for-word -word complaints that someone is going to hear that's going to think of you. So if it's for my networking groups, a great client for me is if you hear a small business owner say, I'm in a networking group and it sucks. Networking groups cost too much. I'm in a networking group and everybody's trying to sell me their stuff constantly. I'm in a networking group. It costs too much, meets too often, meets too early, has the wrong type of people, has too much politics. Anything like that, that would be a good referral for me for my networking group's B2B gathering. So there's my full elevator pitch. Now, I want you to write down some quotes real quick that would work for you. So I'm going to show you some more here to get your brain going real quick. 
if you've ever heard a friend or friend ever say any of the following, I need to make more money. My insurance does this is for multiple industries, not just for one. I need to make more money. My insurance premiums are killing me. We have kid number two on the way. I guess it's time to think about life insurance. And that also could be we have no, kid number two on the way. It's time to get a bigger home. Or our kids are out of college. We're empty nesters. We're going to downsize. I can't ever get my insurance agent on the phone. My insurance agent has horrible customer service. My 15-year-old's getting ready to drive. I don't even know how I'm going to put enough money away for my kids to graduate to go to college. These are the types of quotes you have to have. So then you put it all together and you get something like the next two elevator pitches I'm going to read to you. Hey, everyone, my name is Rick Silva with One Referral Away. I'm a referral coach and a consultant for individuals and small businesses. When hiring me, I teach my clients how to network properly so they do not have to cold call. The result is more time spent serving their clients and less time doing business development and dealing with rejection. A perfect referral for me would be when you hear an insurance agent, realtor, financial planner, or mortgage lender say any of the following. I get leads, but God, they're so hard to close. I don't have any leads or referrals. I don't want to sell to my friends and family. They'll hate me. I have talked to everyone I know. I have no one else to talk to. My insurance business is floundering. I see all kinds of people making money, but I'm not. I'm in a referral group, and it sucks. That's a finalized, rounded out what I think is pretty damn good. Um, the only use of the word you and your is right here when I'm asking you to listen for this. I'm not saying if you need. So you have to use you so you, I can say when you hear. Here's my wife. Hello, everybody. My name is Marcella Silva with Valour Enterprises, and I'm a land banker who specializes in helping individuals with $25,000 to $1 million in cash, old 401ks and IRAs, and 1031 exchanges diversify through pre-developed land and high growth areas. General Douglas MacArthur describes it best when he says, all a man has to do to get rich in America is find out where people are going, get there first, buy the land, and then wait. A perfect referral for me would be when you hear a friend, family member, or client say any of the following. I'm sick of tenants, toilets, termites, trouble, and taxes, the five T's. I'm never going to be able to save enough money to retire. The only way my IRA goes up is when I put money into it. I need to do a 1031 exchange. I'm afraid to look at my 401k or IRA statement. That would be a great referral for me. So I want to show you if I can get the camera to focus. What I just read to you is pretty much this is my land my land investing card. And on the back, you will see the quotes that I just read to you. Word for word quotes I just read to you. On the back of my business cards. There's a video on my one referral away channel, how I made a million dollars with my business card. I made a million dollars on the business card with this sentence right here. Let's see if it shows up on the camera right there where it says, I need to do a 1031 exchange right there. It says, I need to do a 1031 exchange. I've made over a million dollars from that one sentence on the back of my card. I didn't cold call. I didn't door knock. I didn't pay for leads. I made a million bucks because I put 1031 in the back of my card. If you want more help with your elevator pitch, uh, down below is where the recordings, uh, That that's the recording right there is the recording for elevator pitch. That's not the recording to this. That's if the recording... This is going to get sent out to you. It'll be in the bottom, in the comment section of the video you're watching right now. If you're watching it on YouTube, that's my personal email address. Another awesome testimonial. The one thing about I can prove to you about networking that they don't teach it in school because <clears throat> the last uh, testimony I showed you, much more highly educated than me. And I make very clear who this is. This is Dr. Cynthia Stevenson, Dr. Dentist. Stanford University, IQ double mine, but they don't teach networking in school. Rick is amazing. He's very professional. His direct button-down approach is concise, efficient, and effective. I was able to learn new speaking skills in a very short time period that has translated to grow three times my goal and twice the profitability that I projected in my, in my business plan just four months into my new business. So we're going we're gonna to do about another... 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so, I'm going to show you something that we're going to take a, a three-minute bio break, and then we're going to come back and do another 20 minutes, okay? So if you're interested in learning more about my home study course, it's at onereferralaway.com. If you want to go there right now, you can, and I'll walk you through it, or I'm going to walk you through it with slides. So if you go to onereferralaway.com, that's the foundation of networking. That's teaching you way more than I can teach you today. It's, it's 
it's six, seven times longer than this is. But if you go there, you're going to see this box right here that says one referral away. And you click that box and it takes you to a description, a little description of the course, and then here's the modules for it. And then you're going to see this payment button right here for $7.95. And let me tell you what that includes. That includes the course, which is the main thing, the course. But before we get to what else is included, you're going to see a button right here that says have a coupon. Whoa, have a, do you have a, yes, you do have a coupon because you're watching this video. And if you click the coupon button, you type the word 200 right there. Then guess what? The price goes down to 500 bucks. Now, for those of you who, who already own my course or who I've talked to about the 795, I want you to understand this is for with one hour of coaching, not two. This is for one hour of one-on-one -on -one coaching included in the course. If you want the two hours, if you want two hours of coaching, do not put in the code. Okay? So you're going to get either one hour at $5.95, or if you want the two hours, then do the $7.95, plus unlimited texting, plus a limited Facebook group, group talk. If you need to talk to me via Facebook, you just Facebook Messenger me. Okay? So it's one hour of one-on-one -on -one coaching, $5.95. That's my name. That's my personal cell phone number if you ever need to text me. That's my email address. Okay, don't go anywhere. We still got to talk about power partnering. I'll get it done in 20 minutes. We're going to take a three-minute bio break, and I will be right back, and we're going to go into power partnering. I'll be back as soon as I can. Thank you. Okay, I hope you guys are ready. I don't know if that was three minutes or not, but we're, we're going to party. We're going to go into power partnering. Rule number five in networking. We're gonna we're gonna haul booty now. Rule number five in networking: professional networkers do not look for business. They do not look for business. Also, Chris Lacey, um, you are on an older program, so I, I will I will build you the greatest avatar ever, and I'm gonna barter that for a couple cigars. <laughs> we'll get it done. Professional networkers do not look for business. They teach people how to find them business. Professional networkers don't look for business. They teach people how to find it for them. Okay? So fully 84% of all sales that happen in America are due to word of mouth uh, of some kind between friends, colleagues, customers, and prospects. They discuss who to use, who to buy. So if you give them a phone call, hey, uh, you sold a home to my 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 brother, and I want to talk to you about it. That's That's because you... You built some kind of an equity where you got some word of mouth. The only way to be in the top 10% of any industry is to have people selling for you at every opportunity. That's it. Bottom line, don't live for clients. Find power partners. Teach them how to send you referrals and live happily ever after. So the, the course I explained to you one referral away is the entire basics of networking. Okay. What I'm now going to spend a little bit of time on is an advanced course that I don't even have public. If you're interested in hearing about it, you can email me or message me, and that's the advanced power partner course. So we're going to go into power partnering now. Just don't expect all of this in the other course. The other one is teaching everything about networking. Power partnering is a whole nother animal. Okay? You got to become a professional networker unless you like the cold call. The definition of selling, I'm not going to read all of this because we got to uh, mind our time. Selling is getting people to sign on the dotted line, mutually beneficially. Marketing is websites, brochures, funnels, anything that walks people through a process to purchase. If it's not facilitating the sale, then it's not marketing. Marketing helps facilitate the sale and also breaks down the barriers and builds trust. Networking is through the law of reciprocity, a system in which you help other people reach their personal and professional goals, knowing that in return you'll reach yours. Calling someone on the phone and saying, hey, can I help you purchase your next home? I'd love to be that person in the future. What can I do to earn your business? That's all kind of embarrassing stuff. That's not really good. We're going to go over good stuff. Well, we already did go over good stuff. Over the long haul, building a referral-based practice will make you more money and is more fun. And if you go down to the third bullet, when you have a lot of referrals coming in, you can spend less time working and make more money because not everybody in the world wants to work 60, 80 hours a week. A couple of funnies may seem like I'm just being nice, but I'm actually just networking. 
We're not gossiping. We're networking. I try networking, but everybody else I know is unemployed too. Well, even if you're unemployed, you get out there, get on LinkedIn. I'll help you. I'll help you connect with people on LinkedIn magically. The currency of real networking is not greed, but generosity. Because networking is not selling. This is what you want to become. Anywhere in that picture you want to be, put yourself there, and then your job is to create a web of people around you. So I have a whole video on this on my YouTube channel, One Referral Away. <clears throat> Excuse me. But this is what I've seen. So people start, you see, as business increases, people, they get busy. And like, ah, I'm too busy for a networking group. I'm too busy to network. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. Well, sooner or later, you're going to close all your sales. Your sales are going to drop off, whatever. And then you stop your networking. And then you're right here. And this is freak out time. Because you're going, uh-oh, I don't see anything in the pipeline. I better increase my networking. <clears throat> and this is the oh crap spot right here. You're like, oh my God. I don't have business on networking. <clears throat> so what happens is, what I try to tell people is, the busier you are, the more you should network. Because the more business that's going to fall off. So if you're in real estate and you have one deal and that one deal falls off, it was one deal that fell off. If you have 10 going and three fall off, you close seven, you close six and then one kind of just ghosts you and you don't hear from them. It's a lot of stuff going on. So it's a lot more of this in your life. If stuff's going away. You're closing deals are falling off. They're disappearing. You're asking for discounts. You're going, yeah, I'm going to cancel and go with the neighbor. <clears throat> nah, forget it. I'm going to go, I'm going to do a FISBO, whatever it is. You have a lot of this. The busier you are, the more that's going to fall off. So the busier you are, the more you should network, not less. The more you should network. When people understand that, their business will be so much more successful. We don't want to have this because this is your income and this is your stress. We don't want this. We want to try to keep it as flat as possible. So if you are cold calling, my goal is to get you from this to this. Get out of cold calling because it looks desperate. It's just not. It's just not what you want to be as a business person. Without going into too much detail, because you'll be able to read these slides when you get the replay. A, neat, a lead is a name and a number. A lead, a lead is somebody who doesn't know who you are. They don't trust you or referral. The person trusts you that came to you from a trusted advisor. So if my financial planner <clears throat> says, call this person on the phone, then I'm not asking for discounts. I'm just calling them. Hey, uh, Hey, Nancy, my CPA told me to call you. That's it. Sales done. I mean, the only thing you could do is screw up is at that point. Now, you're also going to want to have a form completely filled out top to bottom, which we're not going in to do today. But I, I, I think I've gone enough over it. Leads are cold. They're hard to close. Referrals are easy to close. They're warm. They're more fun. You're going to make more money, close more business, and have less appointments, and have less people stand you up. Same thing with cold calling and door knocking. Cold calling demeans the industry. If it's raining or snowing outside, good luck making money. Banging the phones, DNC lists and all that stuff, and smiling, dial, and you got to buy all these software. Forget all that crap. Just have coffee meetings and teach people how to send you referrals. Done. End of story. The main reason to work with referrals is because they're easy to close. You can make more money and, and work less. Bottom line, boom, done. Now, There's two places you're going to get your business from past, current, and future clients, and then from referral sources, which are called power partners. The power partnering, if you want to build a referral-based practice, and some of you put, I've run out of people to talk to, I don't want to talk to my family members, good, don't, you don't need to. Find these people. So whatever industry you're in, there are other people who already have your client. I'm going to say it again, there are already people who have your client. They're called a POI, personal of influence, a COI, center of influence, COI, circle of influence, SOI, sphere of influence. In the networking world, it's called the power partner. <clears throat> the definition of a power partner is someone who calls on, sells to, serves, and consults the exact same person you do. They consult with the exact same person you do. They just don't sell what you sell. 
some of the advantages are getting to the decision maker. There's no better way than power partnering, getting more highly qualified clients, and also finding clients for your power partners. So if you're in real estate and, a, and a, I don't know, a mortgage lender sends you someone and you found out that that person inherited money, maybe they need a financial planner and an estate planning attorney. It should be your job to introduce them to. So not only do you get referrals from power partners, you're able to give referrals to other power partners, building your relationship even stronger with them. Remember, if you're constantly looking for sales, you will always be looking for sales. If you slow down, you sit back, you take a breath, and you actually create relationships, teaching people how to send you referrals, learning how to send them referrals, then you can build a referral-based practice. So how do you figure out who your power partners are? Ask yourself these questions. Who has your client? Who already has your client? If you're a mortgage lender, a financial planner, a CPA, an estate planning attorney, and a real estate agent has your client. If you're a real estate agent, a mortgage lender, a financial planner, uh, even a roofer, a handyman, a carpet cleaner, an interior designer, all of them know when people are going to sell. They're all power partners. Now, my wife has 163 different industries for land investing. So if you think you can only name five or ten, you are so sadly mistaken. And I'm going to give you some numbers on it real quick just so you can kind of in your mind understand what you have to do. So if you're a novice power partner person, you have very few referrals. As you work up the list, the higher you go up the list, the more uh, power partners you can name. <clears throat> so if you're down here at an advanced beginner, that's like 10 or 20 or 30. If you can only name 10 or 20 or 30 different industries, that's what all your competitors can do too. We want to separate ourselves because one of you at the very beginning said, how do I separate myself from the competition? And if you're a real estate agent, you're still asking yourself that, then go back and watch this again. But you've got to come up with lots of different types of power partners, lots of different names. When you get up here, you've had 400 to 1,000 coffee meetings. Okay, so let's put some numbers to that. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Whoa. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so if you can only name zero to five industries, you're at the bottom. Mm -hmm. If you can name 15 different industries, you're, you're still kind of at the bottom. You start to work your way up that pyramid when you can start naming 30 and 50 and 100 different industries. And I'm going to give you some more ideas here shortly. <clears throat> here's step by step. Now, I created a six-hour course on this. I'm teaching it to you in 15 minutes. Trust me when I tell you there's a lot more to it than this. This doesn't even scratch the surface. <clears throat> you got to determine who your, who your client is from your avatar and your elevator pitch. you got to ask yourself the right questions, then you fill out the power partner wheel, and then you make a list. So what does your client look like? Write it down. We did that in elevator pitch. Part four of your elevator pitch was what's the company size if you do corporate? Uh, how many employees if they do corporate? What's their title? Are they a homeowner, an investor? What's the title? And let me tell you what the title is not uh, for my friend Cheryl. Cheryl's title is not anybody who needs a home because we can't say anyone we can't say anybody because it's too vague so remove that word and replace it with something else okay but we need to know what our client looks like now uh, if they're an investor or if it's regarding insurance or money how much money do they have do they have enough money some financial planners don't want to talk to someone unless they have at least a half a million dollars in liquid write it down what what's what's the circumstance they need to be in to be with you What's the circumstance? Here's some more. Are they getting divorced? Maybe I know a lot of female real estate agents who really like to work, work with women getting divorced. That's awesome. So are they getting divorced? Are they getting married? Are they moving away? Are they going up, going down in the side of their home? Are they inheriting money? Um, corporate hiring, firing, relocating, whatever it is, write it down. And then you're going to take all of these and you're going to ask your, you're going to look at their company size. You're going to look at their title. You're going to look at what their circumstances are. You're going to write all it down. And then you're going to ask yourself this question, who already knows about it? So um, uh, 
Mike and there was uh, Mike and whoever else says any form of financial money lending that's outside of a bank, then the number one power partner is a banker. You just got to learn how to educate the banker to send you their turndowns. So that's how you figure it out. Who has my client? Well, who took the banker? <clears throat> this is systematically how we do it. And we're, we're coming into the home stretch. Just bear with me here. That's you on the top. So you want to put your industry there, whether it's real estate, mortgage, financial planner, insurance, uh, whatever, whatever you do, money lender, whatever you do, put it here. And then you put the circumstance. You could put turn down. You could put homeowner, investor, first time home buyer, empty nester, um, car owner. I did. I put that in there before I knew somebody was in the auto industry in here. <clears throat> um, CEO, CIO, whatever. Put their title and their circumstance in here. And then over and over and over and over and over, you're going to say, uh, who knows about that? So let's just use the example. Now you see at the top property casualty insurance agent. Who? Well, actually, what we did is we put, if you look, we put car owner. And who would know when somebody's looking to buy or sell or whatever, anything to do with a car? Okay, anything to do with a car, property casualty insurance, watch the wheel turn, car dealer, windshield repair, auto repair, uh, could be muffler, uh, all kinds of stuff. They, the people who fix rims, chiropractor for car accidents is fantastic if i if i was a property casualty insurance agent um i would pretty much only network with car sales people auto repair muffler and chiropractors and if i give you all the reasons we'll be here all day <clears throat> then we can get into other things like like homeowner we got financial planner realtor mortgage construction cpa uh banker and that's just saying homeowner then we have upsize, downsize, we have relocation, we have to look at the home and go roofer, painter, handyman, carpet. Guys, this just scratches, it barely scratches the surface as to what power partnering is. So when people say, hey Rick, I know all about networking. After watching this, did you know all about networking? Because what I'm showing you today is a small fraction of what networking is. <clears throat> this is what you need to become. You need to become a connector where you are getting referrals from real estate, mortgage, financial planners, but you're also introducing them to each other. You need to build a giant network. Now, whew, this is what this is what networking a networking system looks like. I can help you build this from top to bottom. Okay, so. Coffee meetings and virtual meetings, how to set the appointments, including word for word, what to say to get the appointment, what to say in the coffee meeting presentation, how to give referrals uh, to invoke the law of reciprocity. What do you do when you receive a referral? And when you give referrals, it's a lot more than giving a name and a number. How to network with power partners and spheres of, spheres of influence and teach them how to send you referrals. Learn how to get people to chase you instead of you chasing them. Turn your clients into your best salespeople. What to do and say at networking events, crafting elevator pitch, how to get people to chase you on Facebook and LinkedIn, not you chase them and much more. Andy, who went to Cornell, who's way smarter than me, but they don't teach networking at Cornell. I've been working with Rick about a year on how to go about networking. He totally overhauled the way I do my elevator pitch and taught me how to be more effective out in the business community. Directly from the coaching I've gotten from Rick, I now have over 6,000 a month in recurring business. Again, back to it. If you want the networking course, it's that one referral away. You click that box. You scroll down. You click on the seven ninety five. Click coupon. Click two hundred, and you get one hour of one on one coaching, and then you get the course. I'm just going to tell you now. Well, and number two, if you want two hours of one on one with me, don't put the code in. I'm going to tell you to do everything on this screen to build it all for you six to eight hours with role play so understand that this isn't going to cover this isn't going to get it all personalized if you want me to build it all for you with you it's going to take a little time but this is going to help you build it so when i'm out of the picture you can keep going that's the foundation so if you're interested go to the coupon code at one referral away type in 200 bucks for one hour of one-on-one -on -one coaching if you want two hours of one-on-one -on -one coaching don't hit it you'll have 
text access to me, Facebook access to me, anytime, 595. There's my contact info. We had a long seminar. I'm fried. I hope you enjoyed it. I can't see your faces. You can see mine, and I'm toast. Woo! I need lunch. Thank you very much for getting on. That's my personal cell phone number if you want to text me. That's my email address for my networking stuff. And then if you want the course, it's there.